Okay. Our first reading comes from Proverbs 19.3. One's own folly leads to ruin, yet the heart rages against the Lord. Let me repeat that. One's own folly leads to ruin, yet the heart rages against the Lord. Then we go to Psalms 4. Answer me when I call, O God of my right. You gave me room when I was in distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. How long, you people, shall my honor suffer shame? How long will you love vain words and seek after lies, Selah? But know that the Lord has set apart the faithful for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. When you are disturbed, do not sin. Ponder it on your beds and be silent, Salah. Offer right sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. There are many who say, Oh, that we might see some good. Let the light of your face shine on us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than when their grain and wine abound. I, I will both lie down and sleep in peace. For you alone, O Lord, make me lie down in safety. This is God's word for God's people. May our May hearts, hearts hear and our and lives lives respond. respond. Amen. An important thing for us to know about that particular passage and several places throughout Psalms, there's a word in there, Selah, and we have no clue what it means. No one on the planet knows what that word means. I find that really helpful. It means that as I approach scripture, and there are a couple other places, if you have a Bible with good footnotes, where there'll be a little asterisk, and at the bottom it might say, Hebrew unclear. This particular word, Salah, only occurs, the only place they've ever found it is in the book of Psalms and in Habakkuk chapter 3, where there's a little part of that prophet's uh, book that has a little psalm in it. So, and we know the Psalms were used in a worship setting, that's one way. And we know that there was, it was accompanied by music. And one of the reasons we know that is some Psalms, like the one we read today, have a little, it says Psalm 4, and underneath it says, to the leader with the stringed instruments. So we know that they were set to music, used in worship. And so our best guess is that Selah is some sort of a, perhaps a, a musical uh kind of instruction possibly an instruction to the congregation like raise your hands and look to heaven we just don't really know and so i think of that as an invitation to be reverent and humble as i approach scripture knowing that if i ever want to really know god's word for me i've got to listen with the eyes and ears of my heart wide open. Because sometimes when we look at words in the Bible, only God knows what they're really saying. Some parts of this Psalm though are pretty easy for us to understand. Uh, this particular Psalm is called a lament because some Psalms are spoken from the voice of a person who's crying out in really hard times. These days, it's pretty easy, I think, for most of us to identify with a lament because we're surrounded, especially in Florida, our friends in the far north are doing a little better than we are these days, but with COVID-19 just raging all around us, there's cause to lament and be frightened. Uh, it's not just that though. Our culture these days has so many difficulties, so many ways where it seems like people easily 
set upon one another. And I know that sometimes in our highest level of government, we look to someone to help tone things down, to help bring us together. In truth, the only one that can really do that is God. God can help us have hearts that are poised for working together, for seeing the good, and acting in a courageous way. This psalm seems to be written from the point of view for someone who might even, this might be, we're told in the footnotes of my Bible, um, might even be someone who's in the temple really speaking out about their own innocence. The psalmist pleads, how long are people going to be looking for lies? How often are people going to prefer lies to the truth? And the psalmist says, I'm calling out to God, the God of my right. And it doesn't mean my right hand God. It means the God of righteousness, the God who really does hold all that is honorable and true. And we, as people of faith, know that putting our faith in God is a secure thing to do. And no matter how uncertain times seem short term, we know that long term, everything is in the loving hands of God. And so we can take risks. We can dare to go through painful times in our own lives, knowing that we worship a God that loves us beyond measure. The psalmist goes on through this story, encouraging folks to offer what he says are right sacrifices with trust in the Lord. And that's part of sacrificing, giving our life to God, part of what happens when we offer money to God, when we offer, like John and Donnie, who have been in that kitchen since six o'clock this morning, when we offer our time to God, part of that, we're told, is to do it with trust, to know that God's going to take what we have to offer, receive that, and amplify it with God's own power-filled love. Sometimes these days, it can be hard to trust. It can be hard to feel like things are going to be okay. Especially, I might say, if you happen to be on Facebook. The other day, I posted something about Finland where, and this was so encouraging to me, Finland has a new program where they've, as a country, decided they're going to end homelessness. They would like, because Finland's like Northern Maine. If you're homeless in Northern Maine, you could very well die. And so in Finland, they just, as a country, decided we're going to stop homelessness. Let's see what we can do. And they've made it their policy to begin, instead of trying to do all kinds of other fancy stuff, they've decided what they'll do is begin by giving every person who doesn't have a home, a home. And they also couple that with counseling. So anyone who wants a home and counseling can have it. And they find from there folks are able to get jobs because if you're homeless and you can't shower and you have no address for people to write to you and say, yes, we'd like to interview you, it's hard to get a job. It's hard to get your feet under you. How do you have even reasonable communications with your doctor if they don't know how to get a hold of you? So instead of going to ERs, instead of going to jail in Finland, you can have your own home. So I thought, oh, isn't that cool that some places have an idea and they're seeing that it helps. They're finding there that it costs a lot less money, it turns out, to give everybody a home than to try and come up with all these social services that cover what happens when people are on the streets. And so 
I thought that was pretty positive. I thought, what a nice, encouraging thing to post. And someone, one of my friends on Facebook, and the shocking part is, honestly, she is a sweet little old lady. If you saw her on the street, she would smile at you and be very nice. But I put that post on, and underneath in the comment, this sweet little old lady wrote, if you hate America so much, why don't you go to Finland? And then you won't have to put up with Trump. And I thought, oh. <laughs> and so, you know, I said, really, I love America. And uh, I think that this is the kind of place where we can work for changes that make everybody experience justice and something like that, you know, and the rest of my friends said similar things like, wasn't this just a positive idea? But things can go south fast on Facebook. And somehow, I know this woman would never be that mean to me. I saw her, in fact, I saw her just yesterday, and she was not mean to me. Um, but there's something about the distance of when you're on Facebook, when you're on Twitter, where people feel like they can just say mean things. But we know that's not what God calls us to do. God calls us to be patient. And if we have an idea or a belief, it's all right to ask questions. It's all right to talk about it. But another example, Sweet Sue Weaver, we have to keep her in prayer. She and Kim and Randy are driving home even as we speak. And so she posted something on Facebook about uh, who's in favor of turning off their phones and sitting on the beach for a while and just listening to the waves. That sounds pretty innocuous, wouldn't you think? No, no, no. A friend of hers, who is also a very sweet man who had not heard a fly. That very sweet man said, what, and just watch the country burn? And he thought, well, even if you're trying to help the country not burn, you could rest up on the beach from time to time. There's something in God, if we can dare to listen, like the psalmist invites us to listen, that does call us to periods of rest. Because Lord knows, and the Lord does know, there is a lot of serious work to be done on this planet. And the kids at Kids Time could think about differences and having friends that are different and celebrating that as we all should be able to do. Sometimes, that gets lost in conflict. And people forget, maybe, that the Holy Spirit, the spirit that Jesus gave us to comfort, to strengthen, and guide us, the Holy Spirit is a spirit of truth. So we really don't get to just say whatever we want. We might make mistakes. We might think something and have to adjust our thinking, but it matters to try and figure out what the truth is, and it matters to make sure in our own hearts that as we try to discern the truth, we're listening to God, not just our favorite pundit on TV, that we really take the time this, I love the part in this scripture where it says, if you're disturbed, and another way of that sometimes translated is angry, just lie down on your bed and be quiet. Sometimes it takes that quietness, that stepping back, that rest, maybe even that sitting or walking on the beach to actually listen. The psalmist says, lie down on your beds, be silent. And then it gets right into the part about offering sacrifices. And sometimes what we have to sacrifice to God is the idea that we can fix everything. 
or that we know everything or that we're always right because I don't know about you, but I get so many examples every day about how I am not always right. If you have children and grandchildren, it will be a humbling experience and you will surely be shown day after day that you are not always right. And even if you have friends, certainly if you have parishioners, there can be time and time again that you are reminded that you are not always right. And thank God for that because we're not called to be right all the time. We're not called to be perfect. We're called to belong to the one who is. So we offer right sacrifices. And in case we need any clues about what a right sacrifice is, the prophet Micah was excellent. The prophet Micah said, what? does the Lord require? This is what God actually requires. And it's not a long list, three things. Do justice. Hmm. So it's important what justice is and that what we do has got to be linked with justice. Do justice. Love mercy. We may want someone nailed to the wall. But that's not God's desire. God's desire is that our hearts will cry out for mercy, for mercy, for justice. And then the part about walking humbly with God. Because again, we can never as human beings say, well, the end justifies the means. We have to know that is one of the world's greatest sacrileges and sins. We can never say the end justifies the means because all God gives us are the means. We have hands, we have hearts, we have minds, we can make decisions and take steps, but we do not, any one of us, design the end, have a clue about what will happen in the end. That's all in God's hands. So we need to pay close attention to how we do what we do. And if we read Psalm 4 carefully, we're going to know that that requires plenty of rest. I've seen it in my grandchildren, and I've seen it myself. If I do not get enough sleep, it is hard to do anything right. And that is true, I believe, for all of us because that's how God made us. We're made to need rest. And that's why the psalmist ends with saying, I will lie down, not in fret on my bed, not in stay awake all night, tossing and turning and figuring out what I should have done, what I'll do tomorrow. Mm -mm. I will lie down and sleep. Why do we do that? Why do we lie down and sleep? Only because God is the one who helps us do that safely. Today, tomorrow, and the next day. In Jesus' name, amen.